I'm so pleased to introduce our Vanilla Olson to you this afternoon as our first speaker. Um, again, not just a, a colleague, but a friend, and indeed a, an additional word here, given the uh, award-winning, teaching award-winning competence and expertise that our Vanilla shows for classes, but I'm always amazed at in the Department of French and Italian is the incredible grace and the incredible elegance she also lends to the halls of language teaching, these qualities that are rare uh, among most academics, but in language teaching faculties, we count on them because they keep our students coming back. So let me, let me give a quick introduction here. Antonella de Fattore Olson is a distinguished senior lecturer in the Department of French and Italian at the University of Texas, where she's worked for over 20 years. We're all starting to get that number, as I said. Yes. Hailing from Rome in Italy, of course, she received her laurea in comparative literature and theater with a specialization in modern American literature from uh, the University of Rome, La Sapienza, and she's heavily, heavily involved in the department as an instructor across the spectrum of language levels and cultures, and is a coordinator of lower division Italian, where she collaborated in the writing of a first year textbook, co-authored uh, a second year language textbook called Moving Toward Fluency in Italian, and co-developed, this is also through the previous incarnation of what CORAL has become, the Texas Language Technology Center, uh, Radio Arlecchino, an Italian grammar and culture podcast. She's presented her papers on pedagogy in Italian cinema, written articles on, Italian, uh, on the Italian drama workshop, a course she's taught at the University of Texas and continues to teach every other year. Antonella is also the supervisor of First Year Italian, the advisor and organizer of the UT Latin, uh, sorry, Italian Club, and the founder and director of the Rome Study Abroad program, which for which she has just returned. It's my delight to introduce uh, Antonella Olson. Thank you very much. I told Tom your lunch break. I'm going to leave because I feel extremely intimidated now that I've seen the other presentation. I'm very new to this, to the 6-6. So the good thing is that I know that some of the things that we'll be talking about are, I think, on the right path, at least from what you, know, you explained so brilliantly so far. So bear with me. It's all new. I'm going to propose some, actually, some very detailed strategies and approach. And I will be very pleased, before I write the syllabus, to receive any comments or feedback because I will be doing that next next week. So, okay. So, um, uh, teachers are are well aware that the learning process in foreign languages uh, classes must reflect changes that occur in our society, locally and globally. Uh, the world has changed, and some of its change are quite scary, at least for some of us. Uh, all of us in the States, as well as in Europe, uh, have seen recently the consequences of budget cuts and uh, a lack of confidence in the field of humanities. Uh, just to mention an example from last December, uh, the, universe, the State University of New York at Albany uh, announced that it would stop letting new major, uh, new students major in French, Italian, Russians, and the classics. So the fear is real, it's tangible, and it's justified. Um, furthermore, I think students have too many choices. So why, do sh should, do sh do why should they choose a path like humanities in which really they cannot ever find huge salaries or job security, and they could choose very easily something a little bit more profit like technological scientific field. So we know why they should choose humanities, uh, but we also know that a change in the way we teach language, literature, and culture is necessary at this point. Uh, with this in mind, I overcame the initial doubts on the 6-6 six, six sequence. Um, and why? I was, like, I'm not, I wasn't the only one, my main concern was the lack of contact hours with students. And another, maybe more personal concern was the fear that I would not be able to teach culture, at least to incorporate culture in my uh, language teaching, which I'll try to do since the very first day of what it used to be Italian 506, the very first semester. Um, 
technology transform uh, our work constantly and rapidly. What, is, uh, what it was uh, effective yesterday, it's obsolete today. Uh, this is a big fear for me. As you see, I have here Sergio Carvajal and Rina also who helped me actually putting up this, uh, the PowerPoint. I still need to learn to master. But I am aware that I need to learn, basically, and I will sometime. Uh, actually, I was very happy to talk with, with Sergio and Romina, who uh, finished their undergraduate career a few years ago, to talk about these issues, to have an opinion outside of the teacher community, you know, to see what they think about all this. Uh, so I'm very grateful to them. Um, so we need to make this change, we need to keep up, so it's necessary, and I do embrace changes. I admit, I confess, I do and I will. Um, and in spite of the difficult situation surrounding us, uh, I think that this is actually could be a very exciting time for us, for me, the teachers. I really think so, I believe that. The Italian department will offer Italian 601 for the very first time this fall. And in the spring of 2012, it will follow the Italian 611. Um, and today, well, I'd like to present some ideas, approaches, that it will apply to the new 66 sequence. And I'm sure there will be revision and adjustment. So I'm very open uh, to your suggestion, your feedback. Also, it's important for us to see what, what is the, re the student response. So, we need to wait until the end of uh, this, the, this, the fall terms to really know if what, what I'm proposing is, is correct. And I'm very grateful to the, the Texas Language Center as well as the Center for Open, it's got a long name, huh? The Center for Open Educational Resources and Language Learning uh, for organizing this workshop. I'm really very grateful because actually I'm, I'm hoping that more will follow because I think that we really, really need a lot of reciprocal support, uh, exchange of ideas, and I learned so much today. I feel like you know, I'm more ready to, to face a, this big challenge. Um, I think now that new strategies and approach are needed, and I think we, need, we must be open to suggestions, flexible in our classroom, and patient during our research on what works best. Now, the approaches that I'm about to present are new because they will be applied for the first time on you know, the first semester, the first year now, of Italian. However, um, they're not new to me or to many of, uh, of us because we did implement them here and there, but mainly at uh, an upper division level or second year Italian. So they are not new ideas, concepts, but they are new because we, we, they will be applied at a different level of language teaching. So um, the major change, and I think this is, I am, I am on the right path because I think you all say this, uh, is that I would like to include in Italian 601 and 611 a type of instruction that is more learner-centered. A uh, student must play a bigger role in the learning process. Therefore, we should encourage more interaction am, uh, among students, more action on the student's part in and outside the classroom, uh, more awareness of the technological tools at our disposal, and finally, a better sense of why students are taking the language we teach. Uh, I will explain more in detail later uh, how to apply these changes, but now I'd like to, to reflect upon these four points. So, interaction. During the lesson, with or without the assistance of ATA, this is a problem that the Italian, I don't know the French, but we Italian do have, we, do, we will not have one TA for each class. And, you know, and the class number, as we know, is 25, I think. I believe that it cannot be more or less, but it's that, that's the number. So that is a big challenge for us. Um, we don't have a flagship program, so I don't know. I mean, we do have, I remember Irene Alvisi gave the great idea to use some of the uh, most brilliant of our majors to ask if they could, without any compensation, I'm afraid, or maybe, you know, a nice dish or pasta or something, <laughs> but I'm afraid money-wise I probably not, but 
but to see if they could be willing to help us there. But that's the, 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 you know, the most that we can do. Uh, nevertheless, I think we can and we should uh, in promote a larger number of group activities. We can still do that, I think. Uh, especially when we deal with vocabulary and composition and the culture. Uh, the action, uh, and I think this is right because that's what you are saying, the number of uh, expected homework outside of classroom is about 15 hours. I haven't quantified the number, but I know that it has to be larger than what it used to be. Uh, so students will be asked to get together in groups and work outside the classroom. Now, talking with Sergio, I start thinking of something that is very important. I haven't thought about this before. Uh, that is that by taking a six-hour language class, uh, our student can only take you know, two, three-hour classes in order to be a full-time student and to be eligible for financial aid. I haven't thought about that before, but this is a very important thing, uh, not just to sell the program, but also to demand more uh, participation, more uh, a larger amount of homework outside of the classroom. Um, technology, in spite of my terrible performance with it, um, instant and visual communication is a reality that cannot be ignored. And I must say that the, some of the current textbooks do not ignore this. In fact, the one that we have uh, adopted last fall, Avanti, I think it's pretty good as far as technological uh, stuff goes. Okay? We may have some issue about grammar and stuff like that. But I think in general, it, it was a good choice. Um, pragmatic sense. Many of our Italian majors are a fine art background. But it really doesn't matter, even if they are taking RTF, which many do, business, international business, or history, we need to give them the tools to use in real life the language that they've been studying. Uh, that means that they need to be able to express themselves in their field of interest. Uh, they need to be able to look for a job in Italian, and some do, you know, because I see many of them ask me how to do it. Um, and to be knowledgeable of the country and the culture in which the language is spoken. Now, the application of the four points I've just listed uh, can be better understood, I believe, by focusing on three major components uh, where they can be best applied. And that is vocabulary, compositions, and culture. So now I'm going to talk a little bit more in detail of how I envision how to put all this in practice, okay? So we start with vocabulary. And I believe we will still be teaching grammar, second to our first and second year um, Italian. Uh, however, I'm planning to give a greater stress on vocabulary in first year, allowing more interaction among students by means of group activity. So in the past, the vocabulary was mainly used as a translation from English to Italian, vice versa, or writing of short sentences. Uh, and so the students were really passive learners, except for the uh, occasional, or maybe everyday, conversation in class with the teacher. I would like to change the way students learn lexicon by using a more communicative approach. And I was very happy to see the video about the sketch, because that's exactly what I had in mind. <clears throat> so this is the way I wanted to structure this activity. Of course, we will start with chapter two. Um, each chapter of this book has the analyst vocabulary, okay? So what I want for them, for the student to do, that at the beginning of week two, actually, the instructor, we divide the class in groups with a minimum of three students to a maximum of five students, and write a calendar for every day of the week and each group will present in class and act out. Of course, I'm leaving with the other. I teach play production, so that's something that I really like to do. But it's something that we have done in the past. Many years ago, I remember we used to do not as structured as this. Nevertheless, we did do this kind of exercises. So I like to bring it to revise and enrich again that kind of activity. So um, this, this dialogue that the student will present will include as many uh, as possible of the words listed at the end of the chapter. 
which they have, been, have seen, you know, during the week, but they are responsible to actually create a dialogue, a little bit like the one we have seen before, hopefully with the same great result. And uh, uh, at the beginning, I think that we could be satisfied with the student delivering maybe just five lines each, but the, the number of lines, of course, will increase while we are going, you know, we, we go through with the book. So if in chapter two, the student will deliver a five lines each of the, of the students in the group, then by chapter 11, which is the last one, I'm expecting at least 15 or more. A uh, student will be entirely responsible for the preparation of the dialogue outside of class. They can utilize the instructor office hour, of course, but they are responsible to finish this on their own. Uh, I believe that for, at least for purposes of logistics, the group should be the same throughout the semester, simply because they will be familiar with their schedule, uh, their needs, when they're better for them to get together. So personally, I will keep the same group throughout the entire semester. For the first dialogue, the instructor will assist the, stu will assist the student in class. By the end of the semester, each group uh, will have delivered at least three dialogues, but also have listened to many more presented by their classmates. So the instructor will assign a grade for each dialogue, and the cumulative average will be entered both in the class participation and in the uh, oral, general oral performance components. Um, now, by reaching a better understanding of vocabulary and including the new words in a contest created by the student themselves, therefore the contest is more uh, personal and real, writing in the target language should be an easier task for them. Uh, moreover, if a student can relate and identify with the subject we provided for the composition, writing would be less of a challenge. So for this reason, I think that music uh, can be an interesting stimulus for writing. Uh, students have different reasons to be in an Italian class uh, because of their heritage, their love for Italy, a country that they once visited love, their field of studies, of interest, music, history, uh, international business, or merely to fulfill their language requirement. One thing they have in common, though, it is, it's music. Uh, music speaks to their soul, uh, it's part of their daily life and brings them together. Therefore, I suggest that Italian songs be the devices to trigger students' interest in writing. Uh, this is what I recommend. Uh, prior to each composition, instructors will present a, and analyze uh, with the students the text, the lyric of a song, show a video on you, from YouTube, and assign the topic in relation to the chosen song. Now, here I listed some, I don't know if you know, I know that my Italian colleagues know this, so uh, the, the choice is not necessarily based upon my personal taste, but by the fact that the student uh, love these songs for one reason or another. I just want to show you, just for a minute, the very first one. Uh, the second one is very provocative, so I don't want to talk about that. I know that's not very actually. So we go with the classic, so I will uh, absolutely, completely feel at ease. Nobody can contest this song. It's an old song from 1970, uh, became popular again among young people thanks to the uh, movie Ocean's 12 uh, as part of the soundtrack. So I like this video in particular because it was uh, shot in the 70s, so the student can have also an idea of the cultural environment of those years. They can see the way these people dress, the way they dance, the way they communicate with each other. So there are many videos on this song, but I chose, I've chosen this one because I think it's, it's, it's good. We can see maybe just a little bit, just the beginning of that. So we have an idea. Thank you. 
circle they thought that they announced or spoken. That's the culture I know right there, you know? Because we used to do that in Italy, everybody was smoking, you know, talk show and stuff like that. Anyway, in the, in the background you can see couple dancing, the way they dress, mini skirt, boots, you know, things that I think, you know, we can talk about that already. But then, uh, yeah, that's not. So, anyway, so what I will do for this song, I will go to class, show them, make copies or show, you know, from, uh, from the, the internet, the lyrics of the song. Uh, and then I will show the video. I will encourage, of course, the student to you know, look at it again at home whenever they want. And then I will assign the topic of this composition uh, for which they have to write 100 words in Italian. In my mind, looking at the syllabus of what we have, the program of the, the book, uh, this will be the composition number two. Because the first one, there is no way they're going to understand, you know, uh, for one third of what this woman is saying, the singing. So, this is going to be composition number two. And what I like to um, give as a topic, it's divided in two. The first part, it's related to the actual video and the song. Uh, so, physical description of the singer, of the video in itself, the environment, the other people in the video. Uh, and then, what is she singing about? What's the subject of the song? Uh, after that, the second part will be, and it's called Ora Tocca Te, now it's your turn will be, okay, you are in the same situation. You are, like the singer, waiting for someone who uh, will never show up. So tell me how you feel about that, who is this person, uh, how do you react to the fact that he doesn't try, and so on. Anyway, make relation between the, the actual song, make a connection with the real experience, okay? Uh, the other one, as I say, and, and again, those are just indication or every, each instructor can choose, you know, their own songs. Fabi Fibra, like students love this one, it's very provocative, it's definitely against Italy, uh, so it's, uh, you know, it's something that makes them think because you can ask them uh, how, what is something that you don't like about your country, what would you do? So anyway, it's something. It's a rapper, Fabi Fibre. It's a rapper. A student apparently like rapper a lot because they can understand them better also because they don't study so uh, The other one, it's a big uh, hit right now in Italy. Giovannotti, uh, my students of the Rome study program, and they, they ended this thing with the you know with the, they they sang for the Italian family during the show at the end of the program. This song, and you know, almost cry. You want to see? Okay, can we see just a little bit, just a part of this? You are not. You didn't want to see the provocative one, eh? No, you want to see that. Yeah. That's after the talk. <laughs> <laughs> if you can do that in group, uh, you can do group, or just do one. Or just curious what that is. So what do you think Italian calls the song, the music will work, you think? Because we are uh, bringing music every day to class, so it's nothing new. But not, the new part is now to make them write the connection to the song. So this is the, the latest hit that the school loves. They love it. They just love it. They were singing, they memorized, they sang it to the families. I said, okay, I guess that's a good choice. So I don't know how much you can ask about because it's all about 
but it's okay because he, he now it's fun. I'll, I'll give you, I'll send you the lyric. You, you will enjoy. It. Okay, so so basically that's what I propose for the composition. Composition so far I put four. Uh, four composition. The first one is going to be a traditional format, simply because the student second chapter they don't know much else than to present themselves, to describe themselves, and that's about it. They don't have any verbs yet, except for maybe to be or to have. So I will wait for second, third, and fourth composition to use the song. Um, they will only one of these will have a rewriting. Number three, I believe, and number four composition will be in class. I will show you better later when uh, to assign the song. Um, I am not expecting, uh, Carlos, I, I remember your comment, to put composition on the test, uh, except for the final. On the final exam, yes, I would like for the, uh, to ask the student to write a short composition, but in the test you are right. We shouldn't because we have four compositions, so they can focus on that. Um, so music reflects culture, and now I want to talk about this very important component for me, crucial in a foreign language course. So what constitutes culture within our classroom? Uh, a statement of Pierpaolo Pasolini who is better known as a movie director, but in reality it's one of the greatest uh, Italian poet as far as a very powerful social commenta commentator. In fact, Scritti Gorzari, this book, it's a collection of articles that he wrote on, uh, of Italy in the 70s. So he mentioned that, um, the, he said that culture would be abstract if it were not recognizable, visible in real life, and therefore did not have a practical dimension. Now, if Pasolini were to see this, he probably would have a fit, but uh, I, I let him choose the, this, this picture. I'm not a big sucker fan, but that's good that the students are. Uh, so I strongly believe that culture should be discussed in class, and I'm glad to see that you do discuss in class because I'm afraid that it wouldn't have enough room, uh, but I'm glad it does. Um, and in fact, here I'm saying that I was afraid that we will not be able to devote to culture the same amount of time as we did before. So I came out with the idea that the students are responsible to provide cultural information uh, and by doing so becoming more dynamic participants in the classroom. Again, this is something that I remember uh, 20 years ago, maybe, we were doing it in class. We were asking the student to come out with other reports, but slowly but surely we stopped the practice, and I think now is the good time to revise it. So culture will be tightly connected uh, with oral performance, especially, in particular, with the oral reports. Uh, and this is how, how I envision such a connection. By the middle of the semester, students in group will present to uh, the class an oral report. The subjects, remember it's a group, it's not just one, uh, will be chosen among the many cultural notes that the book presents, because it does present tons of them. In four chapter I count them, there were 35 cultural topics. So out of 11, I'm sure you know, we can multiply, and the number is quite high. So, I'm not saying to them, choose your own topic, I'm, I will uh, limit it, the choice, but again, we are talking about 100 topics, so I think, you know, they have plenty, plenty of um, possibility of, of, of their choice, and they can develop their information as much or as well as they want. It doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to say what the book, read what the book say. Um, so, um, the, I would strongly suggest to maintain the same group form before for the vocabulary, the dialogue. Uh, each group will show the instructor the first written draft of the uh, report three days prior to the class presentation. The instructor will correct it and give a cumulative grade to the whole group. So each one in the group, it's interest in doing a good job because that will be the, the grade for everyone. Um, and the group will then present it to class with the support of visual aids. Um, the student will receive an individual grade 
based mainly on pronunciation and content, uh, but also on accuracy in the grammar and use of proper vocabulary. The individual grade will be added to their group first draft grade, and the average will constitute the final grade for the oral report for each student. Uh, each student is expected to speak for about five minutes. It's only one hour report, that's right, the whole semester, so it's not very much. Uh, and for a group of five people, uh, the presentation will last 25 minutes. And if we multiply this number for 25 students in the class, we can say that the total amount of time devoted to oral reports will be about 125 minutes, which is a little bit over two hours. And right now on the syllabus, we have at least four days that we will be devoting to the, to the oral reports. Therefore, we should be fine time-wise. Um, now that I told you a little bit of my ideas of how to implement these changes, I want you to show the actual way in which we are going to divide these books. Um, in the past, Avanti was used for Italian 506 and Italian 507, whereas in Viaggio, moving toward fluency, was used for Italian 312K and 312L. Now what we are going to do, I remember that the Avanti was adopted, I think this is important, in the fall of uh, 2010. It's important because uh, we, it took us a long time to choose the right book knowing that the 6-6 six, six sequence was a possibility. Therefore, we chose the book. Uh, we have many meetings. We, we interview other uh, people, represented books like Percorsi and so on. And we decided together to adopt this book. Um, the Avanti book, uh, I'm sorry, the In Viaggio books, instead now will be used for Italian 328 and 329, which are our two language courses at the upper division level. So we are going to use, but not as it is, uh, Eric Edwards, the co-author, and I will change, revise the book, knowing that now the audience will be different, and we want to do it as a customized format, therefore we can make change as much as we, uh, we, we want in the future, according again to student responses. Um, let me see now if I can show you what the way that we divided the, the chapter for Italian 601. In the first year, we are going to use Avanti, which I need to tell you there is a wonderful tool, which is the online workbook. The online workbook is great because the students uh, do it at home. They are immediately graded, and at the end of the semester, the system will give you the grade. We usually, we give to them, to, to this exercise, 10% of the final grade. And uh, I think, and we have access, of course, we can monitor the progress or not progress of each student. Therefore, I think that that is a very important tool that this book has to offer. Uh, and then we use the, the purple book, as the student called it, the English grammar for students of Italian. They have it, of course, for, I believe, every language. And it's a great tool because they explain the grammar that sometimes they don't know as well as you expect them to know in relation to the target language. So that's something that we have used in the past, but this time I wanted to make you know, more real, meaning that we will work on, with that book in class well, at least once a week. Um, we are doing now 11 chapters, whereas in 506 we were studying only eight chapters. So of course we need to make little changes there. The culture, as I say, we will not be talking, the instructor will not be talking about the culture in class, rather the student will do it through the oral report. That you see there too, but in reality it's only one oral report, but if some student wants to go ahead of time, maybe because they have uh, midterms, conflict, and stuff like that, they will have the choice of going first. I doubt anybody will do that, but they do have the choice. Uh, the composition, the first one I told you will be just traditional format because they don't know much by then. But the other three, I'm, uh, um, I'm thinking maybe three days prior to the composition that they have to bring to class, 
the, the instructor will work with the song and the video. Uh, for the one in class, the number four, on week 11, of course, we are going to show the video and give the lyrics only the day before. Otherwise, the student, you know, you don't want the student to actually write that composition at home. Um, we are going to have four texts uh, every two chapters. And for the test, I still need to think about it. Uh, what are we, how are we going to do? We still need to write the test. But um, the other reports, as I told you, will be using culture. The one thing that I have, and of course, it's going to be a final exam, not a cumulative, just the last three chapters. Uh, the one thing I haven't talked about is the oral exam. We always have an oral exam in uh, the Italian class at every level. Uh, I'm, I think that for this fall, we are going to keep the usual format, the traditional format, which is a conversation with the instructor with two or more students. Okay? So I'm thinking for this semester we keep that way, but I really would like to talk about with you later about an idea that I have that I think is much, much more better for both the student and, and the instructor. Maybe a little bit more, more work, but I think it's worth it. Okay, so this is the 601. Uh, the 611. See, oh, sorry. Back, if you don't mind, just for the uh, question that I see that you are trying to put like some functions, but it is then at the end, towards the end, it goes more into the structures. Mm -hmm. The imperfect tense, imperfect versus present, present verb, reflexive, yeah. reciprocal verbs. It's more inclined to the structures. I mean, the structures are the ones that seem to be guiding some of the labor. Well, ones. actually, what we did there, we just copied what was the topic of the book. So chapter 6, that's from the book. They talked about La Moda, directed in their object pronouns. So it's not something that I decided, but it's something that we took straight from the book. Now, we have one week to work on that song, on, the, on those items. On that same week, for example, we have the composition 3 as a homework. So now my job is, after this workshop, to actually write down the syllabus and divide that with the days that we have. So, but I will, uh, I think we will still keep that. I mean, we will still work in, and uh, the, the type of exercise that the textbook offers are extremely interactive. They're all group so make it like functioning, so the descriptors will be more functional. Oh. Structure. oh, okay. So well, you know what I mean? yes, yes. Right, yeah. mm -hmm. but well, that's not our, we just copy, right, Melissa? Okay. I think we just copy mm -hmm. exactly from the book what the, in chapter six the book talks about. It's more, was more for us, in fact, this slide I use it to give it to our, you know, to our colleagues in Italian so they have an idea what to expect at the end of you know, the 601 and 611. Okay, the student will not have learned completely, for example, the subjunctive. You know, so they have a better idea of what to expect in after the future. So this is just, I'm not going to give that, this to the students. This was just mainly for us. See? See, do you have a seat? Why is it not comprehensive? Um, I really don't the the topics of uh, chapter nine, but also the the gra I mean, of course, you know, by then uh, it's not that if they don't talk about the past tense in chapter nine, ten, eleven, will not be on the test. But the vocabulary, for example, and the grammatical structure will focus on chapter nine, ten, and eleven. But the, question is, the question is, I mean, I, I agree that's the, can we push the students and have, you know, this uh, overall, it's not this, it's comprehensive, I mean. For, yeah, uh, but if you say, okay, I'm going to put, for example, the vocabulary, we say we want it to do more of a, you know, oral, but of course they need vocabulary to write the composition or whatever. So if you tell the student, okay, there's going to be the vocabulary from chapter 1 to 11, you, you say that's good? Oh, yeah. this is, yeah. this is a, if we can, I mean, I say, you know, if we can do it in Arabic, you can do it in any language. Yes, yeah. so okay. It's, it's very doable. Mm -hmm. and it's, if there is enough activation, it's very doable. I thought yeah. people's have to learn they can. Yeah. Okay.
Okay, to be honest with you, in Italia, I doubt that we ever ever done, and you can tell me if I'm, no, my memory is failing, a comprehensive. Hmm? It's always comprehensive automatically. Because but it's comprehensive automatically, the but... They need to use vocabulary from every yeah. chapter, sure. which is totally obvious game. from those three chapters, but no, they need everything, otherwise they can't do it. They need everything, but, but we never have... know the articles at the end of the... Of, of course, right. But we never have say that the, comp the final exam is going to be from chapter one to whatever the last chapter was. But it really is. Yeah. It really is. Well, be honest with you. Yes, it is. Well, uh, well, if you think of the past in which you will put cultural, for example, information, we will say, look, the cultural, the vocabulary, uh, the grammar structure will be focused, you know, chapter whatever, you know, the last chapter. But obviously, if you don't know how to do a, a, a definite article, which was taught in chapter one, then you know you shouldn't even take the exam. But how can you not put that there? Or say, okay, we focus on past tense. Of course, you're going to be using it the present tense. You know, I mean, but, but tell them, tell them. Yeah. Oh, okay. 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 okay, it's just on chapters nineteen. Okay. okay. Okay, so thank you. We can change that. Yeah, yeah. 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 Right, right. Thank you. It just says final exam, chapters 9, 10, 11. Right. And if you said final exam with an emphasis on oh, 9, 10, 11. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, yeah. Yeah. Now, again, remember, the this is not the CSE exam. 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 This is just for us. You know, the syllabus usually I write every single day what we'll be doing. This is just an overall for it was, I use it for my you know, colleagues, and now I use it for you, I mean, I have time to make another one. But, uh, yeah, okay, so I'll take that, but probably I would have said, focus on 9, uh, 10, 11, now I'm not gonna, or maybe I'll, I'll say comprehensive. Okay. Oh yeah, sure, I'm sure. I'll tell you that you say that. I'll say that to you. Listen, listen, take notes. Are they really going to just listen and take well, notes? They, There's not a but, but this is this gonna, well, they first of all, remember, this is something, you know, we, I haven't done it yet, yeah, yeah. so I'm proposing it. Except but I, I haven't have done it a long time ago. I'll tell you that in the past, what we do, when we used yeah. to do that a long time ago, uh, the other students were fascinated and wanted to know more. So we can create some kind of questionnaire while the other <laughs> students do. Although I don't agree with that. To be honest with you, I think that you need, you know, it's like when you go to theater to see a play, you don't take notes. You enjoy the play. <coughs> so I think that personally, I'd rather not ask them, uh, let me make sure that you are enjoying and understanding everything. To me, it has to be something that is fun. It's fun because today your classmates are doing, tomorrow you're doing. Remember that this, this is going to happen every day. And it's going to last no more than, I don't know, at the beginning maybe seven, six, seven minutes. So I don't have to impose you to listen and be careful on the five, six minutes. No, I want it to be natural for them to enjoy and appreciate the effort of their, of their classmates, especially because tomorrow you are going to do it. So it's something that will occur pretty much, you know, every day. Every day there's going to be a group doing this kind of, of, of skit, or you want to call it, dialogues, whatever. So it's going to take just a short time of that class, five, seven, or the most, ten minutes. So I don't, you know, I prefer for them to just enjoy it out. But I'll see, you know, I'll see. If, if it happens that the students are not paying attention, but the other then I will come out with some. Because it's going to be their only interaction with a cultural point that they are not preparing, then you would hope that they would get something out of that. Yeah, wait, look, we are talking, there are two different things. We have the, the other reports is on culture, and then we'll have to come out with, you know, visual aids, and I'm sure they can find tasks to make it more entertaining their presentation. What I'm talking about, the dialogue, the vocabulary, yeah, that yeah. is a little bit different. That, that would be, yeah. No, I was talking about the cultural. The part. culture, yeah. yeah. Oh, you think that they are not enjoying? Oh, they may enjoy it. Yeah. But will they get anything out of it? 
Uh, that's the other thing. Well, well that's right. Really that's that's right. Memory. But first of all, they're going to have everything already on the book because the subject. I'm not. I don't want them to come out and give a presentation on mafia. Okay. Uh, I don't, maybe your interest will do it in second semester. Right now, your choice is limited to what the book presents. So you can, and there are, it's very, you know, you got a great variety. You have from Caravaggio to the Palio di Siena or to Laura Pausini. So, you know, it's very, you really have a wide range of choices already here. But it's going to be something from the book. I don't want to hear about mafia because the book doesn't present the mafia, and so you know you, you don't have the tools to talk about the mafia in Italia. But you do have the tools to show me something of Caravaggio, tell me the colors of the painting, what kind of feelings Caravaggio inspired you. You can do that in Italia, because as you can see, the other reports are towards you know, me and So by then, they should be able to to, to present that. I'm pretty, I feel pretty confident that you'll be able to do something nice. I do that all the time in my Italian 328 and 329. I always need the student in groups to do something of their own choice. And I like to be honest, and they come out with the greatest thing. I mean, I have videos, YouTube is full of my student acting out dialogue, including on the mafia. And, and so I know that they can do it. Of course, you know, it won't be the same level of an upper division student, but I know that when you give them this, um, you know, this, the room to say, okay, you do it. I'm not going to be the one with it. You have to come out with something so interesting that the student has to follow, uh, and it's their own ego. So I know that they will. I feel pretty confident they will do a good job with that. But again, you know, everything has to be still. Um, Assess. <laughs> okay, um, so, but Benny, any more question on the seat? Are the, are the cultural coupons that are included in these oral reports, or is any of that ever included like in the tests or exams? In, uh, I don't think so. I mean, in fact, we had a meeting uh, with, I have a meeting with my colleagues. Uh, they teach a lot of lower division Italian, and we decided not to, right, Mark? not to include the culture, which we did in the past. It's very, very hard to put culture on the test. I mean, it's such a subjective thing. Like, if I decide, okay, to me, that is important as far as the culture goes, may not be important for another instructor. And remember that there are six, seven sessions of 601 this fall. So I'm not going to be teaching all of them. What if, what if on the oral exam, what if you told them in advance, that some of the topics that you may discuss in the oral exam, the oral exam. might include yes. some of the cultural topics yeah. your student brought. So you say there was a presentation on Caravaggio, and you asked the student, so tell me, what did you think about, about Caravaggio? About Caravaggio, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And, the, and the student yeah. have to at least be, hopefully, pay, attention. pay some attention to what was Yeah, there are do. some way of make sure mm -hmm. that they do pay attention. As I said, there is a little questionnaire, you know, that take note of what they are. They, again, for the other reports, it's fine with me if we check what they are learning. For the dialogues, no. I think the dialogues should be entertaining, fun. So for the dialogues, I wouldn't do any kind of monitoring. But for the oral reports with the culture, yeah, because it's important to me that they are learning the culture. And of course, that doesn't mean that, OK, I'm not going to talk about Italian culture ever. Obviously, I do, you know what I mean? Oh, and the book does too. So I will, it's just that before we used to spend one day, two days of the week just to use what the book gives us. A movie, at the end of each chapter there is a movie, uh, a lot of stuff, you know, ledger, scrivere. So there was a lot that the book gives us that we are going to just revise and do, not to remove culture from the class, but to do it in a different way and having the, uh, the student being the active participant in that. Well, you know, sometimes too, uh, Antonella, when we used to do the oral reports way back, remember, mm -hmm. I would have this, the uh, students doing the report actually take uh, maybe a minute or so, and I know time is real precious, but I usually have them take like a minute or so and actually ask questions Question. yes. to the students. And yes. that to answer your thing, it sort of keeps them, you know, on the test. Follow. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's it. To, to make some connections between now and before lunch, I think to continue that discussion, 
Facebook groups. Would be a wonderful topic. Yes. Uh -huh. Yeah. 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 No, in fact, I need to get a little bit more into the, you know, all the, the internet thing. Yes, absolutely. I will do it. <laughs> so you mean that Facebook before or after? Uh, ah, as a reaction. Yes, yes, right, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's a wonderful idea. We can do that. And each instructor then can do that, right? Because each instructor has to do, you can't do a, okay, all 601. No. So each one of us will be doing that. You can use Blackboard. Yeah. Oh, Blackboard. Blackboard. Yeah. Blackboard. Yeah. Uh -huh. okay. But again, we can leave it as an individual yeah. instructor's yeah. choice. Okay. Um, okay, so now 611. Uh, there is not very much I can tell you about 611 because, to be honest, something that we have to work on it. Uh, well, I mean, we structure the class, that's what it's going to be. But we still need to work, and we will not do it until we see the response of the student at the end of 601. You know, because we have many ideas, but we have to see what the, how the student responds to what we are proposing. Uh, we do know that we are going to keep using Avanti. So we are going to do the last five chapters of the book, and, uh, on, and, and the online workbook always. Uh, we are going to add a packet of readings. Uh, there we still have to, you know, choose what, but the idea is short stories written by contemporary Italian authors. That's what we have been doing so far. That's what in Viaggio had in the past. Uh, and then we have Radio Arlecchino. Tom very kindly mentioned the Radio Arlecchino. I think Radio Arlecchino is going to be a very important tool in this, uh, in this scenario. Uh, it will, we have used Radio Arlecchino in the past, but this time it will be a strong part of the curriculum of 611. Can we see maybe so you know what Radio Arlecchino is? Um, Radio Arlecchino um, is a, an online podcast on grammar mainly, and culture, on mainly on grammar. And um, it has to do with Commedia dell'arte. Our characters are masks from the Commedia dell'arte. But the two main characters of this Radio Arlecchino will be again uh, myself and Eddie Edwards, which, you know, we wrote the book in Viaggio together, so there are some similarities with this project. Uh, basically what we do, Eric and I have uh, tried to be funny, a conversation on grammar. You know, we just talk about grammar, how crazy grammar is, how crazy the subjunctive is, and we will try to be entertaining. <clears throat> After our conversation in English, we have a dialogue, and all of our Italian professors have been part, have been actors over that, <coughs> so mainly native speaker. Uh, we have this dialogue, and each one of them interpret the role of one of the masks of La Commedia dell'Arte. So you have Pulcinella, Arlecchino, Arlecchina, Brighella, Il Dottore, and so on. And they use actively the grammatical structure that we have talked about in English with Eric, okay? What we also have, see you have all here the Commedia dell'arte mask, so we, we, do a li we can give a little lesson on Commedia dell'arte in Italiano. We have, on the, under the podcast, you can see that we have 22 episodes, and here, all the, uh, the, those are all uh, communicative functions. Those are their describing, uh, comparing, likes, dislikes, uh, expressing your, uh, your opinion, recommendation, hypothesis, talking about the future in the past. So those are all our, uh, our episodes. So we devote more than one for each uh, communicative function. Okay? So I think that will work well. It's a little bit too, too advanced for 601, but it will work better as it did in the past for second year. So we are going to be using, implement this in, during the class. Okay? So if we want to go back to the, and it's easy, you know, if you want to see one of the episodes, you can just, just Google Radio Lechino, I think is the first thing that came out, UT. Okay, so we can go back to, well, I'm done, I think almost. So, in conclusion, um, I am now an even stronger believer in increasing the interaction among students and developing a more dynamic student <coughs> participation in class. I'm confident that we will be able to create a more tangible connection among us 
as well as a productive and positive community that will enhance both teaching and learning. Uh, because Italian is mainly spoken in Italy, uh, the unique culture of the Italian must be incorporated in a proactive way. In fact, I envision a deeper involvement between the student of Italian and the Italian community. Um, the Italian community, I'm talking about the Italian community outside of UT. Uh, there are many, I can think of a few, Pier Carlo, it's a great photographer, who also is a nurse at the mental hospital. Uh, we have Esmeralda, who is a, an historian, who is involved with the archaeological site in Italy. Uh, we have, uh, uh, I can think of, uh, we have many more of there. We have Carmelo, we have Daniela. Daniela, she's the owner of the very popular restaurant. I mean, we have a lot of people outside of UT. And uh, my idea, and this is the idea come out of the exchange that I had with Sergio, to give more power to the Italian community, uh, individual though. I'm not saying, let's go all to the, uh, come si chiama, the ICA, the Italian Culture Association. No, they don't speak Italian. Uh, you know, they, they, they know very little, they know how to eat spaghetti, but really they don't have much connection with the actual Italian society. And that's not what I want. I would like for the student to be in touch with these other people. You know, those are Italian, they live here, uh, they can go to interview them, they can have, make first a research of their country, the city of origin, so they have a better understanding of where they're coming from, go and interview them. Uh, they can go to the internet and, uh, you know, get in touch with people in Italy. I mean, make it real. The language is real. Uh, it's function. I need it for something. So that's what, that's my plan. This winter I would like to research a few ways how to do that. I would like for them to record all on a video. So they, what I told you before about the oral exam will be to replace it with a group uh, report of the interaction among uh, students, okay? And then finally, generally, is the, the Rome study program. Of course, we are gonna encourage even more their participation in the Rome study program, but also in any other study abroad program, because I think at this point it's really crucial. Thank you so much. Yes, we are going to use, well not only, we are going to use the Avanti book that we used, we used to use in one year, now we are going to use in two years, but we are going to, for the site for the 611, which will be 3 to k and R combined, we are not going to use just this book, we are going to use a packet of readers, we want the student to be ready to go to upper division, because at the upper division level they will have to read from one book to five books in time. So they're going to start with us, you know, reading this, uh, as I said, I don't know exactly how many and how well, many we say three, but they are authentic material from, you know, contemporary writers. And then the radio are the key, you know, we do because it will reinforce the grammar, because we have a PDF, a transcript, and grammar explanation, but they can do that at home. Okay, we can test, we can include some of the, you know, the grammar structure from there on the test. Um, and then, yes, and then we'll be revising the in Viaggio for 328 and 329. To be honest with you, I don't think this is, you know, a bad idea at all, because I've been teaching 328, which is the first two upper division languages, for quite a while. And I'll tell you, the book that we have been using are, uh, not so good for the student. They are way, way too difficult for them. So I'm glad to be working on this and making more, you know, realistic. Thanks again. Thank you.